Hello out there, lords and ladies. How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to the channel. I am your Leash Lord, the Godless Gamer, and today we are jumping back into our Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord series. You're watching episode 4, and the main objective for today is to finish investigating Naretz's Folly. We still have to talk to like 8 more people, and we have to do a lot of traveling, so we're going to be doing a kind of a world tour this episode. It's not going to take too long for you guys, because I am going to edit it down, just to make sure it doesn't take too long, but... We're going to go on a big journey around Calradia now, because uh, I want to finish this quest. If I focus all of my attention on this quest, we can get it done sooner, and I would really like to get it out of the way, so it's not, like, something in the background that's, like, a nuisance. Like, once I once I start doing the things that I want to do, I only want to focus on those things. I don't want something in the background distracting me. So we're going to get this quest done, we're going to do some traveling, and maybe fight in a few more tournaments. You know, that's always great. We want to increase our clan tier to clan tier 2. And uh, when we get to clan tier, clan tier 2, I'm confident that the Vlandians will accept my fealty because I want to bend the knee to the king of the Vlandians and get myself some land, start getting some land for myself. But we aren't there yet. Before I get, before we get to the fun stuff, <laughs> the, the, the really enjoyable stuff, I really want to get this quest out of the way. So let's get to it. Let's focus all of our attention on it. Uh, my plan of attack is going to be to travel east into Kuze territory. We'll go along the, uh, we'll go up west to northwest, we'll travel north into Sturgeon territory, then we'll swing west into, uh, did I say west? East, sorry. We'll swing west into the Batanian territory, there should be a lot of people we can talk to. Uh, that's what's nice about Batanian lands, it's very condensed, so the people that we need to talk to should be in a relatively small area, so they shouldn't be too, too hard to find. But that's actually going to be at the tail end of our journey, hopefully, and then hopefully by then we'll have talked to enough people. But I noticed that we do have a hideout right here, and I'm going to go do it. Let's go cut some heads off and get some loot. Now, between the episodes, I did do some more practice fighting just to make some money. I bought enough food to last us 45 days, so we should be good with food uh, for this long journey. And I also cut down my party size. I had a party that was getting a little bit too expensive to maintain currently. And 29 men should be enough to, to protect ourselves. So this is a good party size for us. It's not too expensive. Uh, about 300 gold every day. But we should be able to make that easily. No problem. Let's bring all of our companions and anybody that we want to level up. Alright, we're starting the episode with a raid. I want to see if I can cut, <laughs> cut some heads off. I want to do a head count for this episode. Alright, boys, let's go. Ha ha ha! <laughs> That's my speech. I just laugh at them. Alright, guys, let's go. I <laughs> just laugh in their faces. That'll motivate them. <laughs> Your head is mine! Aw, oh, man. That was a headshot. We just didn't cut his head off. We are getting a lot faster, we move a lot quicker. My athletic skill has really been improving, so we outpace most of our men. I renamed some of my characters finally. I, I said I would do that between the episodes. I renamed one of them Cincinnatus. Great Roman name. Uh, am I going to be able to hit this guy? I got him. <laughs> he didn't really react, but I got him. My companions are leveling up. That's that's what's really great about these uh, hideout raids. When you bring all your companions, it's a good opportunity to level your companions up. Because in a big battle, they kind of get lost in the noise. I'm not saying that they don't get kills. But since it's like a, it's a very focused battle, these hideouts, it's a good opportunity to get your companions leveled up. Wow, how is this guy not nowhere here? I was like two feet behind him. <laughs> I'm just wrecking these guys. My athletic skill, uh, my throwing skill, 62 now. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> I love throwing weapons so much. Your head is mine. Nope. 
My one-handed skill, athletic skill, I'm really leveling up. This is great. Our first head of the episode, number one. <laughs> number two! Two in a row. Hell yeah. <laughs> Alright. Excellent. Now let's take the leader's head. We are gonna duel him. I have enough health for that. We're gonna definitely duel him. Show our men what we can do. Got it. This is getting easier, so three heads in one Three heads in one raid. I'll take it. We'll improve these two infantry men. We want to keep getting more legionaries. That's what we want to stack our army with. Uh I'm gonna make sure to pin all these food items, because even if I get rid of these, they will still be pinned. So if I even if I sell this date fruit. This will still be locked, so anytime that I get food from, like, raiding or looting or anything, we'll hold on to it. I like he I like holding on to food. So we'll keep all that. We'll sell everything else. Our charm is now level 20. So before we... Uh, now that I see this, Danustica is traditionally an imperial territory, so that means that the Asurai are fighting the southern empire here. So maybe somebody important of the Asurai is here. Let's try to find an Asurai person. Nope. Nobody. Alright, let's swing east here, and let's go into Kuzate territory. We need eight people, guys. <laughs> eight people. There's a tournament going on in Chai Khans. Let's, uh, let's try it out. A long saber. So that's a single bladed weapon. Like a, a one side bladed weapon. Or maybe it's not. No, I think it is a single single bladed weapon. Oh no, I do have a sword. Okay. We're good. Here we go, the weapons where we just one-shot each other. <laughs> My polearm skill is not this is not too bad. Level 60. Uh, it could be it could be better. But we don't do half bad with this weapon, so we should be fine. Oh, I didn't jinx it. Nope, we got him. Headshot. It's got better cutting, and it is longer. It is longer, but I'm pff, almost sure it's a single-sided bladed weapon. It's just bladed on this side. I guess that's not a big deal. It is longer, so it might be better from horseback. I'm going to keep it. The handling is a little worse, but that becomes kind of irrelevant as our one-handed skill gets better. So once our one-handed skill gets better, it should... It's better cutting. It's not a, not as good at piercing, but I don't thrust a lot with my swords. 
I'm keeping it. I think it was worthwhile. I'm gonna sell everything else. Oh, yeah, prisoners. Yeah, let's get rid of them. Here we go. There's a tournament, and there's somebody important. The downside is that we have to bribe our way into the uh, into the castle, because they're in a city. So, the first thing we'll do is the tournament, as long as we didn't miss it. Alright, it's not too dark. We'll do this first. Another, the same sword. <laughs> the same exact one. We'll get another one for our companion. For our companions. I need the money to bribe my way. Or at least to pay for the bribe. I mean, I have plenty of money, but... More money is better. More money doesn't hurt. Should be going for the guy who doesn't have a sh shield. Die, dog! I was gonna go for one of those horses, and then I changed my mind. Didn't need to. Oh, here we go. One shot. <laughs> nice and quick. He doesn't even have time to throw one. Double check to see how close we are to tier. Uh, we're more than halfway there. We're getting close. How much is it gonna cost? 650. That's not too bad. Uh, we haven't been to a Kuzate city yet. We haven't walked through a Kuzate city, so let's take a walk through the. Uh, let's let's hoof it to the castle. Let's take in the sights. Alright, we have to head straight ahead. Alright. Always gotta look up and check if there's a murder hole. There always is. <laughs> one of the castles that I visited when I was in the UK, one of the gatehouses, didn't have murder holes and I was so upset. At least we're dressed properly. We're all wrapped up. I kind of get like winter... Um, um, what's the name of the city? Oh my god, in Skyrim. I've played like thousands of hours of Skyrim. Whiterun? The one... The, fir the first city that you come upon. Whiterun. All right, so which one of these lucky guys is going to get my bribe? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Can't you tell you? Uh-oh. My mouse is messing up. I can't look side to side. No, I can. not Oh, yeah, I have to talk to the guy. I forgot. Yeah, my mouse is acting funny. It's not, like, letting me look side to side. All right, we'll fix it. All right, guys, sorry about that. <laughs> Took me a second. All right, I want to visit the, the Lord's Hall. 
You were gonna get the bribe, but I changed my mind. I'm gonna give you the bribe. 650. Wait, is this a Kuzate city? Why am I getting, like, Asurai vibes? I like it, though. It's cool. Where's the person we need to talk to? It's over here. I will take a look around, because I spent the money, but... <laughs> what is she doing? They're just walking in place. We need to talk to the one-eyed lady. Yours is not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? They know me as Romulus. Mark it down. You shall be hearing of me a lot. I am Mesui of the Kurgit, or the Kurgit. I'm sure you have heard the name of our clan in the Epics of the Steppe. We carry the name of one of the twelve sons of the great She-Wolf, mother of the Kuzates. I am Lady of Balticond. I know your name. Congratulations on your victory in that tournament. Thank you. Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Penjuraic? I curse that name. It took from me my husband, two brothers, and more cousins than I can count. The Kurgits were never the richest of the clans, but we made up for it with our valor. When word spread that the Emperor was promising silver for men to ride at his side against the Sturgeons and Batanians and others, of course our young brave boys leapt at the chance. My husband, bravest and best of all, led them. We fought the Vlandians. We won, but there was a great slaughter. My husband's horse was slain and he was ridden down, though he died amid a pile of Vlandian dead. Elsewhere on the field, the Emperor was having his head hewn off with a Sturgeon axe, and thus was in no position to pay us. Such are the fortunes of war, but what came afterwards, when word spread of what happened to our menfolk, the other clans, the Arkits in particular, knew we were weak. Our herds were raided. Anyone who protested, or any, yeah, anyone who protested was killed. Monchug did little to stop it. It taught us that valor will get you killed, but treachery treachery will make you rich. That's right, true Game of Thrones uh true Game of Thrones axiom. Yeah, she's giving me a weird look. It's kinda creepy. Ew, that's kinda creepy. I don't want her staring at me anymore. Let's get out of here. Kinda claustrophobic, a little claustrophobic for my tastes. Maybe we're just a really tall guy. Just another sitting room, I guess. I do like the circular kind of uh, layout. I guess a lot of them are like that, but I do like the dome at the top. All right, I won't go all the way upstairs. We've had our, we've had enough. I do enjoy um, immersing myself a little bit. So let's keep it moving. We'll go to Balticon next. If we find at least two Kuzay people to talk to while we're here, that's enough for me. There's another tournament going on. Um, depending on the prize. We'll see what the prize is. If it's worth it, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah this is a horse. This is a really nice horse. I might be able to ride this one. And if I can't ride it, it'll be really valuable to sell. I'm definitely doing this. I, I really want to win this. So no messing around. Take this guy out. As he ignores us. one left on my team. I think we still qualify. Even if I lose, we qualify. Yeah, sit down. It's weird that the Kuzates are using shields that are reminiscent of uh, Scutums, like the Roman Scutum. And then the actual Imperial culture, they use kite shields. Alright, we're not gonna lose. 
Oops. There we go. Oh, there's another person. There's more than one. I thought it was just a one-on-one. -on -one. Pay attention. Come on, boy. Too easy. Right between the eyes. Okay, let's see if we can ride this. That's a really good horse. Let's see if we can ride it. I can ride it. It's better. It's way faster. It's way more maneuverable. It's a little less on its hit points, but we can always armor it up. We can always give it some really good armor, and it's a better tier, so yes. We're missing out on some money if I had sold it, but that's okay. It's, I want a better horse. We'll give this horse to... We'll do it like a hand-me-down thing. Oh, wow. His horse is actually better than the one that I was using. So we'll sell this one. All right, so good prize. Really good prize. Our one-handed skill, we got our next perk. Plus 20% damage while wielding a one-handed weapon without a shield. Double the amount of renown gained from tournaments. Uh, I do do a lot of tournaments, but that tournaments are going to be not a big source of renown for us as time goes on. So as we can, as we progress... I'm going to be relying on renown from tournaments less and less. Like, we're going to be getting renown from other places. So that'll be kind of going to waste. What's the other one? Plus more hit points. Plus 5% experience to melee troops in your party after every battle. I really don't care about the hit points. It's kind of negligible. But the plus 5% experience to melee troops in my party after battles? Let's do that one. Doing that. All right. All right, we're starting to leave Kuze territory. I hope we find somebody. Just one more person, please. I guess not. So only one Kuze person. Here we go, we're starting. Hey, that's good. We're immediately finding a Sturgy to talk to. The first castle that we come across. And it's not costing us any money to talk to him. I don't have the bright. Oh, wait. I do. Damn it. <laughs> I thought we could just talk to him immediately. Alright, this is just a castle. This isn't a city. But this is a Sturgeon settlement, so we'll take a walk. It's funny, the, it, it says this is the dungeon, this is the prison building, and it looks just like a small hut, so it doesn't look like there's much to it, but I'm willing to bet if we walked in there, it would be like a huge dungeon complex. I like the castle, it's pretty cool. I actually really like the castle, if it was a stone castle, it would look pretty cool, but I do like it. Alright, who's gonna get, who's the lucky guy who's gonna get my bride? He's wearing, like, a reddish color thing, and my color is red. This guy's wearing blue. It's my sworn enemy. Blue. So we'll, we'll give the bribe to this, <laughs> to this guy. Alright, so a castle. This is a Sturgeon castle. We won't go upstairs. We'll just talk to him. I... I don't think I know you. Peace to you, stranger. Peace to you, stranger. My name is Romulus, sir. May I ask your name? I am Godin of the... Vagiroving. <laughs> the Vagiroving. I'm saying Vag. 
The Vajiroving, one of the ancient lineages of the Sturgeons. I'm the Lord of Teal. Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pendraic? Yes, it was madness. The greatest blow struck against the Empire in a lifetime, and we squandered it, squabbling amongst ourselves about a flag. They say Olek the Old had pried the Dragon Banner out of the Emperor's dead hands. But then Prince Ragenvad, who had not so much as drawn his sword in the battle, claimed it as a trophy. Olek, who was covered in his enemy's blood, laughed at Ragenvad and told him to go find his own toy to play with. Ragenvad, Ragenvad struck him, so Olek broke the banner staff over his knee and threw it in his prince's face. Or perhaps it was just Ragenvad. He was stewing in his anger when... He was stewing in his anger when up comes the Batanian king, Kaladog. The Batanians had taken their time stripping the bodies of the Imperial Vanguard, and the Sturgeons were angry at them. So Ragenbad called him a coward. Kaladog sneers at him and walks off. Insults his most powerful vassal, and then insults his most valued ally. A fine day's work, wouldn't you say? But he has his but he has grown wiser since, though no more pleasant to spend time with. Alright, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for that story. Alright, so we're starting off well. Found somebody immediately upon stepping into Sturgeon territory, so that's good. Uh, that's 4 out of 10 now. So let's keep it moving. A courier with a marriage offer for Nathanios. Uh, we'll check her out. I already have somebody in mind to get my brother married off to, but let's check her out. Sulhana. She's a noble from the Aserai. She's got good stewardship skills, she's got a good trading skill, and she's got a decent riding skill. She's honest, and she's cautious. Um, I already have a woman in mind for uh, my uh, brother, so we're going to turn her down. I want my brother... I want my brother to marry an Imperial woman, just like I'm going to try to do. We're going to do this hideout because it's along the way. Get ourselves some loot to sell and some some money to pay our uh, soldiers. Alright, what's gonna what, are we just gonna laugh at our men? The day is ours! No. <laughs> Alright, boys, let's let's move it out. Let's see how this new sword works out for us. It should have some good head cutting potential. My athletic skills now 111, throwing yeah. skill 65. Just one more uh, javelin to throw, and then we'll try to cut people's heads off. Headshot. Got it. All right, I like the sword already. Was that head number five? That's a big hit. I might not be able to duel the leader now. I'm gonna have to have my men fight. Yeah, 
Yeah, we're not gonna risk a duel. I'm gonna have my men fight it out. Sorry, guys. I didn't expect to get hit so hard. Oh, that should have taken it off. There we go. Head number six. I don't fight duels. I mean, I do, but not this time. No problem. Yes! Look at that! another tournament. Let's check it out. Leather tabard. Uh, it's armor? Body armor? I'm not interested. I'll be honest, not interested. <laughs> we can skip this one. Let's keep it moving. There's another one. Nasal helm over the leather. Uh, that's the that's the helmet that we just gave our companion. So it's got head armor 23. If I did it, I could give it to one of my companions. But we still need to sell some of this stuff. I forgot to do that. Alright. Um. Some more money and some more renown couldn't hurt, so we'll do it. I have half health that I forgot. <laughs> forgot to take a rest. Three axes to the face doesn't kill you? That was close. Gonna use him as a meat shield. All right, that's who we have to fight: a sturgy and heavy axeman. I admire the fan's dedication <laughs> coming out in the middle of a blizzard. Yeah, it's my helmet, my current helmet is just barely better. All right, let's keep it moving. Oh, 
Oh, we found somebody. Olek. Yours is not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? They know me as Romulus. I am Olek of the Koluving. Kuloving. One of the ancient lineages of the Sturgeons. Can you tell me anything about the battle? A victory won by my father, claimed by Ragnvad. Old King Vol Vodenslav was brave enough. He led us all into battle. I stood at my father's side as we faced the Imperials eye to eye over the tops of our shields. It was like any battle where shield walls meet. Thrust and push, struggling to stay on your feet, but you can't really describe it. Let's just say it's the kind of battle that Sturgeons usually win. When the Imperials had had enough of us, they broke and ran for the ramparts. There, they threw darts and rocks and their cursed fire. We had to go up on ladders one by one. Vodenslav was hit by a mace and went down. My father then went up, cleaving as he went and rallied us and led us to victory. My father took the Imperial Dragon Batter from dead Noretzi's hands. It's a famous story. And, but then, the little Prince Ragnvad tried to claim it. My father broke it over his knee, threw it at him, and told him to get his own toys to play with. It was a good day. Alright. Thank you, sir. That's uh, 5 out of 10, so we're halfway there. Uh, did I level up? Oh yeah, we have an attribute point to to allocate and an, um, a focus point. That's the word I was looking for. I think I'm going to do this attribute attribute point into vigor. I'm going to increase my vigor. And for our skills, our focus point is going to be put in athletics. Yeah, we have st we still have plenty for pole arms and one-handed. Maybe the next focus point we'll do one-handed. For this one, we'll do athletics. We are on foot a lot, I've noticed, so we'll do that. All right, we'll make our way to Barcheg. Hopefully, we find at least one more. That'll be three Sturgeons. And there's a pretty decent hideout right here. I'm doing it. We have 85% health, so we're healthy enough to do this. As long as I don't get... Somebody doesn't one-shot me. Victory! Victory. Alright, let's do our head count. What, how, what is our count out? Uh, six? Five or six? I think it's five. Where did that one go? I just like threw that into the ether. through that too low. There's a head. That's number number six. Uh, that was an arm. I think we're at six. Maybe we're at seven. I don't know. <laughs> seven? Eight? Eight heads so far.
I'm healthy enough to fight the leader. We'll fight the leader this time. This guy just casually drinking his drink. Not a care in the world. We got the head, we got his arm. Ten prisoners. There it is, Ragnvad, we got him. So that's three people, three Sturgeons. Yours is not a face I know. What is I'm Ragnvad, King of the Sturgeons. I'm Lord of Archeg and Balgard. Yes, the day my father died, th thanks to Batanian treachery. When they pledged to support us in battle, we believed they would stand with us in the shield wall like men. But of course, this is not the Batanian way. They sprung some woodland trickery up in the hills, killed off Noretzi's vanguard, and no doubt spent the rest of the battle whooping and boasting and chopping the heads off men who were already dead. It was Sturgeons who met Noretzi's guard face to face. My father ordered me to stay back as he led them into battle. But as, he, at, but as he was at their head, he forced them back, then they broke and ran for the shelter of their camp. We went and attacked their ramparts and broke them, but my father was hit by an imperial mace at the moment of his triumph and died. I will never forget when a messenger ran to tell me that my father was dead, but I knew I must swallow my grief because now I was king. I rode down into the ruins of the imperial camp to take their banner as a trophy, my inheritance won by my father and passed down to me. Oh, some of the boyars were insubordinate, but I have since showed them that I am the master. You are not the master, you are but the apprentice. I am the master. Alright, so what was that? Six? Six out of ten? So we met three, uh, three Sturgeons. That's good. We'll check out this tournament. Depending on what the prize is, we'll do it or we won't do it. Raider throwing axe? Nope, don't care about that. Our javelins are way better. Not a big fan of throwing axes. It shouldn't be too hard to find Batanian people. Their realm is pretty small. Oh, Ergion? Er 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 hey. Hey. I don't think I know you. I'm Ergion, the, the Fen of the Derngil. Derngil. One of the ancient lineages of the Batanians. Alright, tell me about the battle. Ah, uh, for any son of son of the of Batania, there will be no prouder moment in his life than that day. Any true son of Batania, anyway. Look, right before the battle, our high king Errol disappears, and his adopted son Caladog becomes king. That sets that sets tongues to wagging, you know. Yeah, he, no no shit. But let me tell you, old Errol could never in his life have won such a victory as did Caladog that day. We waited for them like wolves in the wood as their vanguard came up the winding road. They came without archers to protect them. Caladog blew his horn, and our bowmen fired on them from all sides. They turned their shields one way, and were hit from the other. A glorious thing to watch. When they were all good and addled, like frightened sheep, running this way and that, the rest of us warriors descended upon them with our falxes and swords. I cleaved this way and that. I took twelve heads. Not bad. We're at, num we're at nine right now. Or maybe it was eight. Oh my god, I already forgot. And mine was far from the greatest catch. Ah, the grandchildren tire from me telling the story. All right, thank you, sir. Twelve heads, not bad. Maybe we can get that many by the end of this. There's another tournament. Might as well check it out. Let's see. Another axe. Throwing axes. Don't care. Uh, we don't have anything to sell, right? Oh, we do. Whoops. We don't want to discard. That was close. Want to sell. Oh, here's another one. There's a tournament and somebody to visit. But we gotta, we gotta bribe our way in.
heavy mail vest. I'm, I've been trying to replace my armor. I was hoping that we'd come across a tournament that'll replace our armor. We'll see. We'll see how it is. I don't think the arm protection for this armor is going to be really good, but... We'll see how it goes. The Batanians like their two-handed weapons, so... Is that, is that Caladog? Yeah, that's the king of the Batanians. This is the guy that we're going to talk to. After we kick his ass in the... Ooh. I spoke too soon. Come on, teammate, please. <laughs> They're just missing each other constantly. <clears throat> oh my god, teammate, you're gonna throw this. Just close the distance into melee! Oh my god. This is really painful. We got him! Yes! Heaven be praised! Heaven be praised is right. Thank you, sir. If he didn't win, we would have lost. Think of it, the arm protection for the armor I'm wearing right now isn't even that good, so... The armor that we win... ...should be better. He's doing pretty well blocking there. It is worth it. It's better. So the arm armor is less. The arm protection is less, but everything else is better. I'll take it. It's it's a Batanian themed armor, but that's okay. We'll give our old armor to one of our companions. And we'll do the hand-me-down stuff. Uh, he can keep the armor he's got. We got our first two-handed perk just from that. Uh, plus 10% handling with two weapons. Two-handed skill to infantry in your formation. Damage to shields. Uh, damage to shields. Alright, that's shield stuff. I don't care. Let's do that. All right, we gotta bribe our way in. Let's take a walk. Let's take a walk into the keep. The Batanian city. Uh, I don't know why that's blue right there. Uh, the castle's over here. I don't know why things are blue. I don't know if you're seeing this, but I think this is just bugging out. We'll ignore it. Birds are chirping in the middle of winter. I don't know. I, I mean, the castle's pretty cool. It's just kind of all over the place. It 
kind of can't make up its mind. It's like a hodgepodge, really. It's not symmetrical. Oh yeah, I have to bribe my way in. All right, who's the who's the lucky guy that's gonna get my uh, my money? This guy's already kitted out better. He's he looks like he's better kitted out compared to this guy. This guy needs some help with his equipment, so we'll we'll give him the bribe. Pretty straightforward layout, I guess. Nothing too special. Look at this guy with his crown. It's Caladog himself. Well dude. now, stranger. Peace to you. <laughs> the crown kind of looks ridiculous on name? his head. It's like just sitting on top of his head. He's not like really wearing it. They know me as Romulus. Mark it down. I'm Caladog, High King of the Batanians. I'm Lord of Maranath. All right, tell me about the battle. I'm a busy man. Oh yeah, really? You don't look very busy. But there's always time to talk about the blessed battle of Pendraic. Our dear old beloved King Arrow, a wonderful man, but with a heart perhaps just a mite too tender, did not wish for us to go off to war. But then he disappeared, and I, his son-in-law, ascended to the kingship. The clans cried out for war. They had a hundred years of crimes against them to avenge. I, a father to my people, gave them what they wanted. Now the Empire uses tricks and traps in war. No Batanian fears to meet an Imperial soldier man to man, but we thought it would be a good laugh to use their tricks against them. So we laid an ambush on both sides of a wooded pass, and wouldn't you know, they marched right into it. They turned and twisted as our arrows rained down upon them, like fish going frantic going frantic in a pond as you draw the net tighter. Then, when they were greatly discomfited, we took up our falxes and swords and reaped the harvest. Oh, there was some unpleasantness later with the Sturgeons about the spoils of war, but what a grand old day it was. All right, thank you. You know, for the king of Bat for the king of Batania, I'm not really impressed with your throne room. Not super impressed, man. It's pretty got a tall ceiling and everything, but all right, that's enough of that. All right, so that's eight out of ten. We just have two more people. Hopefully, we find one more Batanian. We're going to travel up to Sianon next, and then we're going to make our way into the Northern Empire. And then we're going to start making our way west into Vlandian territory. So maybe we'll get lucky and find one more Batanian. Yes! Yes, we will. Alright, so very nice. Another tournament, too. Uh, this is a camel? Interesting. Why is there a camel in Batania? That's the prize. Uh, I'm sure I can sell it for a lot, so we're gonna- we're gonna try to win this. My two-handed skill is not good at all. This guy looks like a Vlandian. What is he doing? We're facing him again. Damn. Honestly, these two tournaments are getting so much easier. My two hand is already 36. Isn't it just 20 something? That was like too easy. It's worth 3,000. That's not bad. I'm, I'm not going to use a camel. Not interested. <laughs> we're going to sell that. And we're just going to bribe our way into the keep. I won't walk there. We'll just get it over with.
Hey, where are you walking off to? Hey. Hey. I don't think I know you. Peace to you. Peace to you, stranger. I'm Melodier of the Fen Uvain, one of the ancient lineages of the Batanians. I know your name. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you. Um, well, Caladog's great victory. Who would dare say anything to tarnish its shine? King Ariel di uh, disappeared while hunting, and Caladog becomes king. Yeah, not suspicious at all. He leads the tribes to war. Oh, we were eager enough, even though Ariel had made a truce with the Emperor, sealed by oaths. When we were dazzled with the prospect of vengeance, who cares about our sacred word and honor? Yeah, who cares about keeping your word and honoring your promises? The ambush, masterfully planned and executed, that none, that none can deny. But I will also not deny that the Sergians fought the main, bottle of, main body of the Imperial forces and the Valandians fought their famous cavalry. So I don't think the greatest glory went to the Sons of Batania. At the end of the day, what have we gained? The Sturgeons hate us worse than ever. The Valandians, too. The Empire, I suppose, is shattered. What can I say? I believe that wars should have a goal, but I am a minority, it seems, among our people. Right, thank you. Alright, just one more person. And uh, we should find them in the uh, Northern Empire. Epicrotea. Heavy lamellar pauldrons. Uh, maybe it'll it, it'll be nice to replace the what I've got. Body armor seven, arm armor twelve. And this is a good old good old fashioned imperial tournament. He's using a meat shield. Good on him. I should have grabbed one of those shields. Uh, does that mean we're out? Nope, we're still in. This guy made it to the end? Nope. Uh, the new pauldrons are better. I'll wear them. Our next athletics perk minus 40% charge damage taken, so I can take char charges a little bit better, plus 30% bonus damage from speed while on foot, plus 30% damage bonus damage bonus to speed from troops in your formation. Um. I think this charge damage is when you actually get hit by the horse. 
I'm, I'm gonna do this one. All right, just one more person. Here we go. There's somebody right here in Atrion Castle. Or Atrion, however you want to say it. Lucon. Who are you and what do you want? We didn't have to bribe our way in. This is the leader of the uh, Northern Empire. I am Lucon, rightful emperor of the Calradians. I'm lord of Diathma and Argaron. Yes, I was a junior officer in Noretz's staff. People say much about the battle that betrays a lack of understanding of Noretz's and of the circumstances he faced. Noretz's had an obligation to avenge the Batanian attacks on our land. He marched out with all the forces he could gather. The Valandians betrayed us, but that's what you expect from the honorless barb- Hey! I'm gonna be pledging fealty to the Valandians, so... I mean, they're not Imperials, so I don't care too much that he talks crap about them, but... Anyway... Fortune favored the enemy. What matters is that we did not honor. We did what honor required. Perhaps Noretzis was rash, sending our infantry up into the hill to storm the Batanian fort, but he thought he could grab the pass quickly before the enemy had time to reinforce it. If he had made the other wager and that turned out to be wrong, people would say he was hesitant. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's kind of a heads I win, tails you lose kind of situation. But anyway, I stayed with Noretzis until we were forced back to our camp by the surging infantry and then fought on the battlements. Eventually, we could hold them no longer. I did not see what happened to, Ner to Noretzis or our banner. Erenikos got us out of there and got us home. I did not respect Erenikos before, but that day I saw he was worthy to be emperor. If you want more information, there are two people you might try to speak to. Istiana worked as a sort of unofficial spymaster for Noretzis. She lives in Epicrotea. We just walked by there, so maybe we can go back there really quickly. Then there is Arzagos, who was his bodyguard. He's supposed to be near Maranath, though I hear he's changed quite a bit since then. Thank you. Alright. Whoops, I don't want to wait here. We want- oh, I did it again. We want to travel to Epicrotea. So we're, so we're all done with that quest, technically. We, we finished talking to all ten people. Now there's two people we have to talk to to get the other pieces of the, the uh, dragon banner. So we'll, I guess we'll get this first one. We are over an hour, guys, so let's at least get the first piece. We'll travel to Epicrotea, and we'll get the first piece of the banner. Oh, look at this. There's a huge army coming. I hope they, they're not trying to attack Epicrotea while I'm here. Yes. Do I know you? I am Romulus. I am Istiana. You probably already know that, though. Once I wielded great power, but now... Anyway, I'm most curious what you might want with me. So, what brings you to me? I believe I have a piece of the dragon banner of Calradios. Is that true? You may have one piece of the banner, but it's of little use in itself. You'll have to find the other parts. But once you can bring together the pieces, you'll have something of tremendous value. How so? The banner of Calradios is part of a legend. They say it was carried by Calradios the Great as he led his small band of exiles into this land to make a new home for themselves. They say that so long as it is carried by a true son of Calradios, he shall never be defeated in battle. Or a daughter, I imagine. Although that has never come up. Yeah, uh, kind of like the, uh, whatever the legend is from Game of Thrones, the prince that was promised. The prince or princess that was promised, so... Of course, our glorious armies have been defeated many times. But I guess those commanders and emperors were not true sons. Clever little legend. A child could see through it if she tried. But of course, people never try to see through the noble lies that bind us together. Thank heaven for that. So, how can you help me find a buyer for it? A buyer? Well, think bigger than that. Let me just say. If you can find the missing pieces, I'm sure I can help you put it to good use. Where can I find the other pieces? Before I reveal that information to you, I need to know more about your intentions. One could use the banner to restore the Empire, 
but one could also use the banner to destroy it. Let me tell you about myself. I was a confidant of the old Emperor Noretzi's. Officially, I was not his spy master, as I am a woman. But that was the role I played nonetheless. I like Noretzi's and was very grateful for his trust, but he was not a good emperor, too stubborn and principled. I probably should have poisoned him. Stubborn and principled, uh, the Ned Stark syndrome? This is what I learned from a lifetime in politics. There is nothing worse than disorder. Suffice to say that I know better than anyone about the lies and cruelty that kept the Empire alive. But all the murders I ever committed in ten years of serving Noretzes do not amount to the death toll in a single hour when an army storms a town. There's nothing special about our Empire. Any one of these petty kings and khans and sultans could probably get lucky and conquer Calradia and do a good a job ruling it as we did. Yeah, but the point me. is, we already did it. Our greatest crimes are in the past. Let us not undo what has already been done. So, if you intend to use the banner to save the Empire, I'll tell you what I know. But if you want to go backward, not forward, then I will not help you. Now, in order to get the pieces from these people, you have to tell them what they want to hear. Now, technically, we are trying to reforge the Empire, but we're not trying to recreate the old Empire. We're trying to create the new Roman Empire under new management. So we don't want to restore what's dying. We want we want to create a new Empire. But we have to tell her what she wants to hear in order for, us to, for her to tell us for the pieces. Good. Then I will tell you what I know. I have heard about one other piece. I do not know where the other pieces are. You may need to keep searching for them. When you have recovered all the pieces, return to me and I'll help you put them to use. All right, she's gonna give us the location of a hideout nearby. There it is, right there. So let's get our first piece and then we will wrap the episode up there, guys. We'll get the next piece at the start of the next episode. <laughs> and I wanna see if this army is raiding the city that we just left. Yeah, good thing we got that done, because we wouldn't have been able to get in there if that siege had started sooner. All right, no speech. Let's just get to business. I do like that we uh, improved our armor a little bit. We're no longer just wearing complete leather. Got some metal going on. I like it. Our athletics is leveling up pretty quickly. We're at 72 throwing. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. Every javelin we threw killed somebody. Nice. Uh, I cut his hand off. I mean, I'm, I love when I love getting anything off, but that uh, was one heads. Yeah. 
Got it. Yes. What is that? Head number nine. All right. Let's try to hit double digits. I need to cut off the uh, the leader's head. That'll be ten. And that'll be a great way to end the episode with a head. I'll eat your liver. Damn it, we did hit a headshot, but... I'm gonna get these two horsemen now. We'll start building up our cavalry. Uh, Sturgy and peasants? Do we want them to be... No, no, no. Not interested. sell everything else or no 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 we, this guy can use some armor it's better armor for him and a better headgear on the third day of spring 1085 you found the second piece of the dragon banner of Calradios oh, Calradio radios sorry guys all right, so there's just one more. We have to travel to Marinoth, which isn't that far away. So we can travel there, get the next piece. We'll do that in the next episode, guys. We are going a little bit long, so I'm just going to wrap this one up here. Let's get our charm perk. Plus three renown when a tournament is won. Uh, I'm going to try to not do so, so many tournaments in the future, so... For the same reason that other perk that was going to help us get more renown for tournaments... For the same reason, I'm not going to get this. Let's increase our ch our likelihood to have children. Let's increase our fertility. Uh, uh, good old Crusader King's <laughs> uh, mechanic here. Plus 30% more likely to have children. I am going to get married soon. Like, relatively soon. And it would be nice to have a lot of kids. So, let's in in increase our fertility. And when we're a governor, plus 10% daily ch chance to get plus one relation with a random nodal notable in the governed settlement while a continuous project is active that's a mouthful but basically if i'm building stuff in a settlement that i'm governing there's a chance to get plus one relation with like a notable person so that's good we'll do that <clears throat> i'm now more virile more fertile all right So we got that done. Very, very nice, guys. Got this, got this, that task done. Talk to all the ten people that we needed to. It's nice that we got that quest out of the way. So we can start focusing on the other good things now. We're going to, uh, ultimately, we'll go to Marinath and we'll get the next piece. And then ultimately, we're going to go to Vlandia, pledge our fealty to the king, or King Durther of the Vlandians. And then hopefully we can start getting some conquest. We'll start getting ourselves some land. We can get some income from all the castles or the cities that we get. So that'll start paying for our party, and we can increase our party size and start fighting some big battles. Things are about to get really fun, guys. I'm really excited. But this was a fun episode. Played some more torn- uh, won some more tournaments, got some more equipment. We are now better equipped. Got some cooler armor. We're now kind of chain mailed out, or just mailed out. And we're leveling up, so our skills are improving as well. Uh, let's end in a city. Let's- to make our way somewhere. Let's go to Sionan. At least we'll we'll get there. I want to end the episodes in a city. Alright guys, so that's gonna do it for this one. We're in Sionan now. Marinath is just a hop, skip, and a jump away. It's the next city over, so we will take care of that at the beginning of the next episode get the next piece of the banner and then we will pledge our fealty to the king of the Valandians. we'll start earning ourselves some land but lords and ladies boys and girls 
Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, hit that thumbs up button down at the bottom of the video. Uh, let me know. Show your support for the video. Leave your comments as well. Uh, let me know what you think. It's been, it's been a while since I've posted some content. It would be nice to hear from you guys. So uh, I will see you guys next time. Episode 5 will be coming at you soon. But until then, have a good one, guys.